Welcome back to Ashton Gate. It feels so good saying that the fans here. Another opportunity, and it's onside, and it's two for Bristol City at this time, and it's in. An early goal for Bristol City, and Andy Vyman is back. And it goes clear ahead of Bristol City, and they are level. It's a first goal for Andy King for his boyhood club. Well, good evening and a very warm welcome to Robins TV. Kenilworth Road, the venue tonight as Bristol City face Luton in this rearranged fixture from Boxing Day. Hopefully you've shaken off any hangovers that you had from Derby Day on uh, Saturday and a key encounter tonight. The visitors, of, of course, hoping that Saturday's win can be a blueprint for the remainder of the season. And joining me tonight on uh, Robins TV is a man that 28 years ago did this. The York City Cup tie in the fourth round a few years ago when Keith Warwin had all the chances. Allison now inside the penalty area, surely the shot comes in. Oh, and it's there! Oh, it's there! Tinian! 25 to go! It's Tinian who scored! And Bristol City take the lead! Tinian! <laughs> <laughs> it is uh, Academy Director Brian Tinian. Hopefully Dan can recreate something like that on commentary uh, tonight. Uh, Brian, memories of that feeling that night 28 years ago? Yeah, it feels like yesterday, but it's making me feel old saying it was 28 <laughs> years ago. But yeah, brilliant for, for all the supporters who were at the game. And yeah, it, it, never, it never gets like, you never get fed up with watching it. You still get the same feeling, if you know what I mean, if, every time you see it. So yeah. I didn't realise until this morning when I saw it on social media, but yeah, it's a fantastic um, memory. Absolutely. Well, uh, looking ahead tonight, um, hopefully some of these Bristol City players can uh, reproduce some heroics uh, this evening as well. Earlier on, the under-23s were, of course, uh, in action. A battling performance in the end, unfortunately, defeat, but ultimately some, some good performances for the new crop of under-23s that are coming through. Yeah, we've, we've allowed a lot of the younger lads who have played in that team quite a bit to go out on loan now with your Sam Pearson, your Sekou Jenner, uh, Dylan Kadji's playing at Bath. All the, what they need to do and where they are at their their time in their careers. So we are getting a, a young group through now. You know, we had a 15-year-old striker start today, uh, Efram Yeboah, who did extremely well. So we're really pleased. I think we had five 16-year-olds on at the end. So we know sometimes the team we put out is gonna is gonna find it tough in that in that league, but we don't worry too much about the results it's, it's the development for the certain players and where they are and where they need to be so yeah we're pleased with them today I thought they worked extremely hard and of course a few of the graduates that were involved with the under 23s more towards the start of the season the likes of Sam Bell and Tommy Conway yeah. hopefully involved in the match day squad tonight we'll have team news uh, shortly but Josh Hours as well is up with the first yeah. team squad tonight as yeah well. Josh is another one we lost from today who's traveled down in the squad today so yeah we got Eamon Benaroos, we've got Sam, we've got Tommy who all started the season playing in the 23. So we're pleased we don't have them because we haven't got them because they're on the bench or involved tonight. So that's, that's great and that's what we're about. OK, well, let's get uh, straight into the teams for this evening. Uh, tonight, with all the team news, it's our lead commentator, Dan White. Thank you very much, Toby. I'm not sure I can create the atmosphere and excitement of Liverpool 1994, but I'll try my best with Luton 2022. And it looks a little bit like this, your teams for tonight. We'll start with the hosts. Six changes for them after Saturday's 2-0 loss to Sheffield United. Rhys Burke misses out completely with suspension after he was sent off, so Tom Lockyer comes into the back to replace him. Cal Naismith retains his spot, but Glenn Rea completes the black back three in place of Sonny Bradley. It's likely to be a midfield five with James Bree and Amari Bell on the flanks. In the middle, Pelly Ruddock and Panzu stays in central midfield and another two changes sees Gabe Osho and Luke Berry join him. Berry's first appearance since the end of October after his latest injury. Up front, Admiral Musqui and Elijah Adebayo are the danger men for the Hatters. On the bench, as you'll see on your screen now, Potts, Slugger, the, uh, the goalkeeper, is on the bench for them. And plus, Henry Lansbury, Kiyoso, Campbell, Mendez Gomez and Fred Onyadinma for the Hatters. And for... Bristol City, 
The team that finished the seven-side derby starts this evening with Rob Atkinson and Andy King missing out with injury. Of course, they picked those up against Cardiff. Jay De Silva and Zach Viner step in for them as Nigel Pearson, we think, sticks with the same shape that dominated Cardiff for a good hour or so last weekend. Max O'Leary stays in goal for the fifth game in a row as he hunts for a first clean sheet this season. Thomas Callas and Zach Viner are at centre-back and we can expect Cam Pring and, as I mentioned, Jay De Silva to cause some mayhem down the flanks. Masengo, Scott and O'Dowda will do their best to support a front three of Semenyo, Martin and Andy Vyman, who takes the captain's armband this evening too. On the bench for City, Dan Bentley, Danny Simpson, Naki Wells, Sam Bell, Tommy Conway and Eamon Benarus are joined by Joe Williams. Many City fans have been looking forward to his return. Could we see him get some minutes later? Well, we'll find out later on. But first, let's hear from the man who picked that side. The head coach, Nigel Pearson, is with Robins TV. Nigel, we're at Kenilworth Road this evening for the Sky Bets Championship matchup against Luton Town, an unchanged side to the one that finished against Cardiff. Yeah. You'll be looking for those guys to finish strong again. Yeah, um, I think we all know that inconsistency has been our Achilles heel this year. Um, yeah, the things that we've talked about in preparation for this game is really to, to try and replicate the good things from the weekend. I thought we played with a lot of energy and a lot of uh, commitment too, um, with quite a bit of quality as well. So, you know, we'll need to do that tonight here because they are a side who, um, yeah, they, they ask a lot of questions of their opponents from wide areas and will will be very, very positive. So we've got to be prepared to deal with that and, uh, yeah, hopefully we'll get back-to-back -back wins for the first time. Andy Vyman leads the side this evening. Yeah. He'll bring a real energy into that leadership role. Yeah, I'm sure he'll uh, quite enjoy that. Um, so <laughs> we've had a few captains this year so far, but I don't mind that either. Um, I think the most important thing is that, that once we get on the field, that the whole team take responsibility. That's the most important thing, really. And Kenilworth Road, notoriously tough place to come. What will you want to see from your side tonight to come and get a result here? A desire to win the game, really. It's not... A, I mean, look, I think this is a really, uh, really good ground. It's got a lot of tradition. Um, it's not changed a great deal since my playing days. And, and um, it's always quite a partisan atmosphere. So I, I like that as well. Um, hopefully we relish the challenge and, and put in a good performance because uh, we're at the stage of the season where we really do need to try. Nigel Pearson there with uh, George West. And Brian, we've um, spoken at length about Semenyo and his sort of progress this season. We've been thinking of you every time uh, <laughs> he's put in a good performance recently. You must be really pleased that he's now turning that into goals as well. Yeah, we've been waiting for that. And, and as I said, I think the last time I was on, we had a com conversation with Antoine and said, look, you can't be a maybe and a nearly for the, for the rest of your career. You're going to have to at some point grasp it. And uh, he's been unbelievably good the last few weeks and um, he's in good form you can see in training he's he's really on fire and um, looking forward to him tonight playing with Chris Martin and Andrew Weimer. I think them three are going to cause Luton major problems tonight I think they're all full of confidence they've all had the goals and I think it could be a, um, a good night for them three tonight Fingers crossed. Back-to-back -back wins <coughs> at stake tonight. Right, it was a fiery encounter on Saturday. The atmosphere eventually lifting the Reds over the line. So let's relive all of the action. Now Tommy Doyle. Not in Pep Guardiola's plans this season. Now to go out on loan. That's a poor pass. It's back to the Manchester City loanee. And he's got his first assist for the club. Collins converts. Wheels away in celebration. And it's first blood to the visiting side. The Atio stand goes wild. And Bristol City will have to come from behind. Semenyo gets things back underway. Here's Alex Scott. Can Bristol City strike back quickly ahead of half time? Scott looks to release Andy Vyman. Lovely touch by the Austrian. Can he respond straight away? Cries of a penalty. Here's Chris Martin. Yes, get in. Fantastic. A fantastic strike from Bristol City's number nine. The perfect response. 
Well played to the referee there. He can have an assist because I was about to say, give us a free kick. Great finish. Lovely pass by Scotty. Andy does well to affect him. Still alive to the ball. Tucks it away nicely. Great response. No hesitation from Chris Martin. Pulls the trigger back in the side this afternoon for the seven side derby. Cardiff players scrambling there to get back to their feet. Lovely one two. Chris Martin's away. Could get his second hit. Yes! A belting finish from Chris Martin. And Bristol City for the first time in the seven side derby take the lead. He slams it home in front of the south stand. It was Andy Byman at the double in the Cardiff City Stadium, but it's Chris Martin's afternoon today. It's a lovely little intricate play, a little one-two, run off the back. Great strike, great finish. Just a little bit of quality, us keeping the ball on the floor, moving it around. Callas is robust. As ever is in the way. Go on, Antoine. Go on, Antoine. Antoine uses his pace and acceleration. Can Andy Vyman finish it? Yes! It's Derby Delight again for Andy Vyman. Bristol City have the two goal cushion. Will that seal the points in the seven side derby? Could this be Bristol City's first double since the early 2000s? A fine finish. Super finish. Cross the keeper. And it all comes from Semenyo's strength there, yeah. just to guide Drame off the ball. I've got to say, it's really good. Thomas Callas' header was so important in that. It's a really good header. We pick up the second ball, play into Anton. Anton's strength nudges him out. And it's a good layoff by Anton and Andy Vine away. Get close all across the park. Into the box it goes. A few cries of a handball mm. there against Joe Rules. One minute of regulatory oh, no. time to go and it's in the nets and this is pressure now on Bristol City. It's Waters off the bench. With a minute left on the clock that pulls a goal back and the deficit is reduced to just one and there'll be some nerves now. Nice to relive it. Uh, Chris Martin was uh, obviously the, one of the standout performers uh, on Saturday, but I want to talk about Jada Silva. I think he's had to obviously wait for his chances, but he seems to have adapted to that right wing back position. Yeah. He was, he, I think he strayed back across to the to, to left back as well, but he's been impressive. When he's he's a really good footballer, Jay. Um, if we want to play wide and we want to get forward and we want quality on the ball, then Jay's a, a perfect uh, player for that position. You know, he keeps the ball well. He's really good in tight areas, sees passes. So, yeah, I'm not surprised that he's come in and done well because he's a, he's a top player. Well, on a tight pitch tonight, uh, hopefully his uh, skills will be all the more important. Uh, we're going to take a short break now, but after that, we're hearing from Callum O'Dowder and looking back at some classics at Kenilworth Road. <laughs>
Welcome back to Robins TV, Bristol City against Luton Town tonight. Bristol City looking to make it back-to-back -back wins for the first time this season. Now, it's time to hear from a player who struggled with injuries over the last couple of years, but now he's getting a regular run of first-team action. It's Callum O'Dowda with Robins TV. Callum, welcome to Robins TV. Uh, by my calculations, I think you're now the third or fourth longest serving player here at Bristol City. So first of all, does that feel weird to, to say and to think about? It only feels like yesterday you've joined from Oxford. Yeah, I think it's five I've, I've had since I was uh, just turned 21 when I joined. So I've been here a long time, but I love it. I love the city. I love, I love this club. And I think we've obviously, this is a completely new training ground as well so I've, it does feel as if like I'm in another team if that yeah, makes sense because yeah. initially when I did uh, first join the club I've seen a lot of faces and obviously look at like Zach, Max, Bakes is kind of one as well um, so I've s still got the few faces but the change in the football club is is massive but a lot of people have still stayed here um, whether it be Jen in the kitchen or Jill um, but no, it does. It, it feels um, it feels good though. I think um, I'm settled here. I feel comfortable, um, and I'm ready to kick on. Uh, your journey does start, as I mentioned, in, in Oxfordshire. So, uh, was football always number one for you growing up? And, and how much encouragement did you get from your family to pursue it? Yeah, it, it, it was. If I'm honest, I was six years old when I went to my first training session. I actually remember. I don't know how I remember the day. Um, when my mum's my mum's mum, so my grandmother took me over to my first training session at Killington, uh, which is a village in Oxford, um, and I was there for a couple of years before uh, I joined Oxford United, and then even now I went through all the ranks up until um, I think I was twenty twenty one, and we had a promotion, so it was nice, but it felt probably the right time for me to leave. Mm. I've been there for such a long time and. I really did enjoy it there, and because it was home, I just felt as if I needed to to kick on just to um, help benefit my career. Um, and I'm happy that I I, uh, I was able to join Bristol City because it's um, it's been a, a journey full of ups and downs, and obviously with the injuries and um, and stuff. But I love it as a city. It's a fantastic city because I didn't know anything about um, Bristol before I first came, but. Um, Quite similar to Oxford. I do love Oxford as well, but I feel like Bristol's just got a lot more going on. Um, uh, and obviously it's a big university city as well. So, um, no, I'm loving it. The aim here at Ashton Gate will always be to reach the Premier League one day. Do you feel your game now can make a difference in, in that fight? Yeah, I, I would like to think so, especially in the new role I'm playing. Um, and, and it's just simplifying my game with the, with the manager and, and the teammates um, and listen I've been here for for such a long time and it's I, I feel it with the fans I, I get I get it um, how I feel that a, a place and a city like this and the fact it's like the foundations that we've got here the fan base training ground Ashton Gate what um, the backing we've got I feel as though we deserve um, something like this and, and listen I know the manager only signed at the start of the year, but the ambitions are there. Um, obviously, it does take time because it's a rebuilding um, a squad of what he would like, and it's uh, tough because it's not going to click straight away. Um, I think it's, it's also that side, that element of being patient, but his promising times, I think, um, uh, the long-term vision can be really exciting here. Calamo Dowder there, loving life in the city and hoping his uh, run in the team can continue as well. Right now, time to go back in time to two famous trips to Kenilworth Road to the year 2000. In this city performance, a little over 48 hours after their post-Wembley saw heads, they celebrated three points at Kenilworth Road. Brian Tinian set up the opener with a sublime pass, which was collected by Scott Murray. And with Luton keeper Ben Roberts twixt and tween, he produced a chip of which Tiger Woods would have been proud. Murray, who was one of City's best players at Wembley, obviously happy to make the keeper look like a clown. The Scots called Scott, again linked up with Tinian, 13 minutes from time, to create City's second. Mickey Bell's darting run down the left was picked out to perfection. Bell for once used his right foot to finish rather than just to stand on. 
Someone somewhere once said that you're at your most vulnerable when you've just scored, but that cliche may as well have been in Swahili as far as City were concerned, because right from the kick-off, the long ball exposed the back four, although the normally reliable Billy Mercer somehow contrived to allow Gary Doherty's shot to slip through his grasp. And then City made the trip to Kenilworth Road for an encounter with second from bottom Luton, looking to maintain a huge unbeaten run. They haven't lost since the 9th of September. And as Ricky Hill's side had only won twice this season, it didn't look as if they were going to relinquish the role yesterday. But it was Luton who started the stronger. Steve Phillips showing no ill effects from the midweek shoulder injury to make a couple of solid saves early on. The first half ended nil-nil, but when City eventually found the net after the break, it began a 12-minute purple patch that sealed the win. Tinian's ball in landed for Thorpe, and after some appalling defending by Luton, Scott Murray was presented with an opportunity to bag City's first. Tinian's ball provided the platform for City's second just eight minutes later. Lee Peacock found himself on the receiving end, and although the angle was tight, he made absolutely no mistake with the finish, his fifth so far this season. The day was destined to get even worse for Luton, though, City put an end to any thoughts of a home revival with just over 20 minutes left. Scott Murray involved yet again, a searching cross falling to Mickey Bell, whose assured finish wrapped up the 3-0 win. That victory moved City up to 8th in the table, and apart from extending their unbeaten run to 12, they now have a better goal difference than all but four teams in Division 2. He may have taken some criticism early on in the season, but Danny Wilson's way is definitely paying dividends. On memories from Kenilworth Road, do you think you might go back to that skinhead haircut? Uh, it's coming out. I'm not going. I won't have to have it cut off. It's going to fall out shortly. So, yeah, I'm sure I will very but, shortly. But for memories <laughs> of, of those days, those are the days I actually started watching City. Lee Peacock, Scotty yeah, Murray, yourself yeah. as well. But for memories of, of yeah. those times, some brilliant goals, Scotty and Mickey Bell, brilliant players, great to play with, and yeah, some great memories there. Hopefully, there's a few more tonight. Absolutely. And, and looking ahead to tonight, obviously, Luton are a side that. I've kind of punched above their weight in this league to an extent. Nathan Jones was at the club, then left the club and came back. And ever since then, they've kind of been on the upwards trajectory. And, and performances since Christmas have been a bit up and down. Yeah. It's a tough place to go. It's a really tight. I think the manager was talking before. It's really tight. There, there doesn't seem much space there. So they'll be, um, they'll be right on top of us. They'll be trying to pressure us. As he says, they get the ball wide. They get balls in the box. So we're going to have to defend well. I think if we defend well tonight, I think we've got enough going the other way to cause these major problems. I think um, Scotty and Hanoa in midfield, really young but dynamic central midfield, could, uh, could be a key to the game as well. Can they control the game? Can they look after the middle of the pitch? And then can we feed them three strikers to cause a bit of mayhem for that Luton uh, back four. And that's a difficulty as well, obviously losing Atkinson, mm. I guess first choice centre-back pairings not there, mm. and then you've got the youth of Han Noah and mm. Alex Scott in front of those two. Those two have got to be disciplined tonight. Yeah, very much so. And I was just looking, we've got like five academy players starting, plus Han Noah, plus three on the bench, so we're really young, so the experience, your Callas, your Vimans, your, your Chris Martins are going to be real key to this, to add that experience and help them young players in a really tough place and environment. Fabulous. Well, we'll let you uh, join Dan in commentary. Uh, remember, you can still grab your match day pass uh, today, both domestically and overseas at robins.bcfc.co.uk. But at this point, we say goodbye to those of you that are watching our pre-match show on Facebook and on YouTube.